hi everyone um, my name is Phil James I'm professor of urban data at Newcastle University's School of Engineering uh, and I'm going to give you a brief talk on work we've been doing on the real-time analytics following the COVID-19 uh, pandemic so I'm going to start by introducing the urban observatories um, there are six uh, funded urban observatories uh, in Newcastle, uh, Sheffield, Manchester, Birmingham, Cranfield and Bristol. And the urb observatories record and monitor activity uh, in the cities through a range of different sensors. And this is all based around the idea of trying to apply the scientific methods to our cities through large scale urban monitoring and observation, analysis uh, and modelling that feeds into decision making. Uh, and this is the framework in which we've been trying to work. So in Newcastle, for instance, we've spe specialised in monitoring uh, lots of different urban indicators, largely through uh, IoT sensing or repurposing existing operational systems. So we currently cover a number of urban indicators from climate and air quality, traffic, transport and others. The scale's fairly big. Uh, systems record over 7,000 observations every minute um, from about 3,600 active sensor streams and 540 CCTV uh, sensor views uh, that are used to collect data. That gives us about in a historical data set of something approaching 3 billion data points from across the city, stretching back four or five years in some cases. So as the, um, as the virus unfolded, we realized there was an opportunity here to demonstrate the impact of real-time data um, and as our infrastructure was in place we were very able to quickly set up a dashboard um, within the first few days just before the lockdown to collate uh, and integrate a lot of the data that we already had and was already available but trying to turn it into a sort of more nuanced form for overall consumption. So this is just one of our pedestrian sensors in the city centre and you can see here that the data shows on the 16th of March when we started so we, we were asked to work from home through to the lockdown and the impact that had on footfall in the city centre. Northumberland Street is the main shopping street in Newcastle city centre. So we saw this dramatic reduction in city centre pedestrian measures across the whole network as these lockdown measures were announced. Um, but as you can see here, the week on week changes, although there weren't significant rises, that has continued um, throughout the lockdown, small increases week on week. The benefit of collecting lots of data over long periods is that you can generate these baselines of data. So we have long baselines of data across numerous different metrics stretching back for two or three years. And critically, that enables us to say what was the normal? how different this is from normal. Those changes in pedestrian flows were pretty dramatic. We were seeing mostly 10, 15% of normal pedestrian traffic around the city centre. And we saw similar things on traffic data, traffic data gathered from Scoot, ANPR systems uh, and CCTV systems. So several hundred traffic count points uh, across the region. Um, again, they showed a very significant drop in uh, traffic volumes. 
um, not as significant as the pedestrian volume. So most places were, were operating at about 40% um, of their normal traffic volumes. So here you can see across the network in, in Newcastle here, in this case, um, traffic volumes ended up about 40% of the total expected volume pretty much uh, across the network with some local variation depending on proximity to hospitals and um, shopping centres or supermarkets. One of the benefits of the observatory approach is, is the observatories do similar things. So we were also able to replicate the same analysis in real time from other cities and acquired data from, from Sheffield, but also cities not already involved in the observatory program, such as Hull, and they showed an almost identical uh, picture. So we start to get a regional picture of what's happening. And that was reflected in uh, the same data that was being used in the COBRA briefings, we saw a very, very similar pattern. And it's very important to have this sort of local view of your of your data uh, because we sometimes worry that uh, things happening outside London are not exactly the same. So this gives us an opportunity to compare. And you can get down to a very nuanced hyper local level with this type of data. So early on um, the government announced that they were going to scrap car parking charges for uh, NHS workers. Um, the bottom line of graph here is in-out data, real-time data from uh, car parks in Newcastle. The bottom one is the car park next to the Royal Victoria Infirmary. Um, the day after the announcement we can see that the uh, car park was much fuller than it was um, the week before the first week of lockdown uh, and in fact fuller than it was at any other time. The dashboard itself was was developed with with decision makers in in mind and they as well as wanting graphical information were also keen to get statistical measures that they could report back to the powers that be on a daily basis about the impact of communications that were going out there and was it having the desired effect. So as well as producing uh, visualizations and graphs, we also automated the comparative uh, descriptive statistics. So looking at daily change, weekly change and change against baseline from the previous year. And there was lots of interesting secondary effects, as you might imagine, when uh, when city centres change and traffic is reduced. Um, this is data from uh, 100 noise sensors across the city, uh, and what we've seen is a is a fall in level decibel levels of ambient noise by about 10 decibels. So our city centres are now about as noisy as a reasonably quiet office. And we also have a very extensive network across the whole observatories in air quality monitoring. Newcastle, for instance, has over 200 air quality monitoring stations in and around the city. And we saw significant falls um, in some pollutants, particularly nitrogen dioxide, which others have also commented on um, nationally and internationally were significantly reduced. This is a, a unprecedented social experiment, if you like, in what happens if you take 50% of the vehicles off the road. And what happens is you reduce the NO2 by about 25 to 30%, it would seem. The rest of the NO2, of course, is from other sources, from industrial sources, agricultural sources. So it tells us what we can certainly quantify what the impacts of large scale social change might be, for instance, on improving air quality. So across the whole network, we saw a, a reduction in, in NO2, 
values, but other values, uh, this is PM 2.5, which is micro dust, which is one of the other key pollutants that, that many people are worried about. Um, and as you can see here, it's a very noisy picture. There may be a very subtle signal in that data, but as yet there's nothing conclusive. So what about coming out of lockdown? Well, as all of this data is, is automated and the collection of it and analysis is of it and, and visualization of it is automated, this is an ongoing process. Um, so this is data from the 13th of May. So this is the day there were um, reduced restrictions on mobility and social movement and an encouragement to go back to work. In fact, uh, initial analysis would suggest that there's not a huge change in the morning and evening peak from the week before. There is a small increase. The biggest change is in the interpeak uh, interval where we've seen a 10% increase in traffic volume. So I assume that's more people going to garden centres, golf courses and tennis clubs and the like. And this picture of week on week subtle changes is, is one that's repeated across the whole network on a number of metrics. This is traffic from uh, Newcastle, Sheffield, Hull, um, and we're seeing that week on week rise. And one of the things that this sort of data doesn't really give us is it doesn't answer the question of what's driving that behavioural change. So we can certainly tell you that something's happening and we can quantify to some extent <coughs> the extent of that, but we can't tell you why it's happening. <coughs> so what's the new normal going to look like and how can the observatories support understanding of it? If more of us are working from home, how how's that going to change things? Well, we're already seeing changes. Um, this is data from 540 traffic cameras that are an, an, analyzed through machine learning. And as you can see here, uh, car, van, bus and truck numbers all decreased uh, in the lockdown. The one thing that booked the trend here was cycling, which has increased. <coughs> and as we move out of lockdown, one suspects that that trend may continue. The observatories, I think, also have a, uh, a role in supporting the response to COVID-19. Specifically, thinking about how we reimagine urban spaces for social distancing. So we've been looking at uh, pedestrian flows and the directions and orientations and traces where people work to support local authority in delimiting zones and reallocating road space for safe movement around the city centre. And these technologies enable us to start thinking about even measuring uh, and getting metrics for whether social distancing is, is in fact taking place um, to understand the impacts of these new uh, uh, designs and streetscapes that uh, are going to be implemented so people can move more safely around the city. So if you want to have a look at some of that data, that's that's published openly and live uh, at this address. And thank you very much for listening.